It's the professional MasterChef semi-finals. The contestants have been split into two groups and sent to cook under some of Britain's finest chefs. If a chef talks to you in the kitchen, you make sure that you answer Where's nice you? and loud. Yeah. Careful with the fish for next time. Soft hands, OK? Last time, Olivia and Jan earned a position in the finals. Now, the last three chefs battle to secure their place in the competition. 33-year-old private chef Andrew, Exose, a 22-year-old chef de partie, and 27-year-old head chef Stu. There is no more important thing I've done yet. There's a lot of pressure today. I can feel the finals coming. I've just got to work my magic today. I need to make it all the way to the end. Anything less than the finals is not good enough. Massive opportunity for all three of our chefs. Finals week is in touching distance. No one wants to lose out on their opportunity now. Early morning, central London and Stu, Andrew, and Exose are en route to one of the most acclaimed restaurant openings in recent years. Can't wait to find out where we're going. The Michelin-starred Hyde, run by rising culinary talent, Oli Dabu. The food we cook at Hyde, I think, is defined by its purity of flavor, its lightness. It's all about restraint and balance rather than gimmicks or showing off. Canapes for six there, please. From an early age, Ollie wanted to be a chef, getting his first taste of the industry when he took a holiday job working at his uncle's Italian restaurant. I just loved it. I loved the kind of visceral platter. Uh, it was so different to school. It was a real kind of wake-up call. and really um, crystallised what I wanted to do. On leaving school, Ollie went on to work with Gary Jones and Raymond Blanc at the two Michelin starred Le Manoir aux Quatre Saisons. Le Manoir, you know, pretty much made me as a chef. Raymond Blanc, he just teaches you to question everything. If something doesn't need to be on the plate, then take it off. It's about balance and, and restraint, and these are things that I, I carry with me today. A grand tour working in some of Europe's best kitchens followed, including stints at Noma in Copenhagen and Mugaritz in Spain, before Ollie returned to London and opened his first restaurant. We had such little money when we were setting up the kitchen. I brought in pots, pans, spoons, a sieve, whatever I had, every penny counted. We just worked our socks off, managed to turn it into a success. Just eight months after opening, the 40-cover restaurant won a coveted Michelin star. But Ollie yearned for something bigger. And in 2017, he opened Hyde, overlooking Green Park. There's a lot more pressure. It's like that difficult second album. It was a chance to reinvent, to do something different. Set over three floors with two separate restaurants, a bar and an in-house bakery, Hyde serves up to 500 covers a day. Two celeriac away, table 22. There's one thing to create one delicious plate of food. It's another thing doing it for 500 people seven days a week to the level that I'm happy with. So to win the star with a team of close to 60 chefs, that's something that I take huge pride in, but everyone plays their part in winning that accolade. The standards here are going to be really high. They received a mission star for a reason, so hopefully keep them standards up. 
I cook, but I don't work in a restaurant. But it has been a, a long ambition of mine to, to see how they run service and Michelin star restaurants. So I'm really looking forward to this opportunity. I'm massively excited because I've never worked in London. There's a big challenge ahead, but I think you just have to take it with both hands and just show what you're made of. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Hi, Jeff. Nice to meet you. Hey. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? You right? Above all else, I want you to really get everything you can out of it. Any questions, any help you need, let me know early. Mistakes I can live with, hiding mistakes I can't. To help the chefs understand his food, Ollie is giving them a masterclass on one of his signature dishes. Beef tartare with alliums and tarragon, and a smoked garlic mayonnaise. This is a complete reimagination. Throw the old one out the window. This is it's clean, fresh, light. For this particular dish, it's using the sirloin. Lovely depth of colour, lo lovely marbling. You don't want to slice it too finely. For me, a delicious tartare mix. It's something that complements the beef rather than overshadowing it. I think the key is, is lightness, balance, and restraint. If you guys want to try this. The amount of pickled and everything you put in there, you can still taste the beef. It's just really nice. The final element to the dish is the tarragon juice. Beef and tarragon, classic combinations. This is just a, a lighter version, something that will be delicious with the tartare. Because we didn't blend it long, we kept all that freshness in there. You can smell it. It's really, really fragrant. So we've got onion shells here that have been marinating. In the base of each, we're going to put a tarragon needle. In a lot of my dishes, I'll keep the herbs whole. The reason being, I want that pop. Now we're just going to stuff the onion shells with the mix. For the presentation for this dish, I want it to resemble a blossoming plant. I like things that look organic, look effortless, elegant and beautiful. I think it's really important that when we serve a dish, it's something that, you know, the customer can recreate at home, otherwise there'd be no point in, in having restaurants. So the next step, the arrowgrass. It's got a taste almost like coriander, very grassy, very fragrant. I love the way it looks already, like it's just coming to life. It's the tarragon juice that we made earlier. Just going to split it with a bit of this lovely olive oil. And then saucing the plate delicately. We're not getting it everywhere. It's a still life, just brought to life at the end with this dressing. There we have it. This is my beef tartare with alliums and tarragon. Classic combination, reimagined. This is the best looking beef tartare that I've seen. <laughs> Can't wait to taste it. All the individual elements on their own taste amazing. When you put them together, it's magical. It's so nice. Obviously, this is my version of a classic. So what I want you guys to do for me is your versions. Keep it simple and take, you know, the inspiration from this. And um, looking forward to seeing your efforts uh, in about a half an hour's time. See you in the dining room. The three chefs now have just 30 minutes to create their own tartar, using a larder that includes beef, salmon, tuna, mackerel, and scallops. Done a starch for one week in a one Michelin star restaurant. Now I'm going to be cooking <laughs> for a Michelin star chef. I'm excited. This is a really difficult challenge. I've not got a lot of time. There's lots of pressure. With a tartare, because it's quite naked as a dish, it's a great test of, of the chef's palate. I think the key is, is lightness, balance, and restraint. For me, what I'll be looking for is a lightness of touch and, and that confidence, whether it's beef, tuna, salmon, whatever the protein they decide to use. So I'm going to go for a mackerel tartare. 
can uh, keep the mackerel quite chunky so it's got a nice texture. And just because I don't want the dressing on it to be overpowering against the mackerel. 27-year-old Stu is a head chef who takes his inspiration from the multicultural food found in his native Birmingham. So this is the, uh, my take on almost like the herb element of the dish. So it's going to be a lovage ponzu. Ponzu is a citrus soy sauce. Feeling nervous about the chef trying it because my style is a little bit different. Hopefully he enjoys it. Stew has made a mackerel tartare with blanched celeriac, a lime mayonnaise, tajitis flowers, and a lovage ponzu dressing. Really nicely balanced. Mackerel, nice big chunks. The ponzu cuts through it nicely. I love lovage as a real cleanliness of flavour to it, and obviously being in the celery family matches nicely with the celeriac. It's nice because it's not a replica of what I did. There's some of your own, your own style coming through. There's a lot to be proud of there, well done. Thank you. That was an amazing experience to get Ollie's feedback and he liked the dish. There's no better feeling, really. So I'm thinking to do a scallop tartare. I've never made a scallop tartare before, but <laughs> the only thing I'm going to do is leave the dressing till last minute because it will overcure with fish. 22-year-old chef de partie, Exose, is the youngest chef left in the competition and has spent the last three years working in one Manchester restaurant. I'm going to tempura the courgette flour so I'll get a bit of texture on the dish as well. I always give myself so much to do, I don't know why. It must be, <laughs> it must be crazy. <laughs> The quickest 30 minutes of my life. <laughs> oh my. Exose has made a scallop tartare with diced cucumber and apple, a tempura courgette flour, roasted courgette and pickled radishes with a garlic and saffron emulsion and a cucumber and basil dressing. The tartare, it's nice because the, the focus is the scallop. The saffron and garlic, there's just enough saffron, just enough garlic. I was scared that the saffron might be too strong, might overpower, but it goes really nicely with the courgettes. As a dish, quite a bit going on but it's great seeing your personality, your take on what we do here today. That was really good. I'm happy with the feedback that I got. When I went to take the dish, I was really nervous <laughs> a bit at the end of it. <laughs> I'm happy that I went with what I went with. I've got a plan, I've got a lot of things to do. I'm going to make a salmon tartare. I'm going to encapsulate it in some kohlrabi. 33 year old Andrew has been cooking in the Royal Navy for his entire 12 year career and has never worked in a Michelin starred kitchen. Yeah, I definitely feel like I've brought my own personality to this dish. It is still inspired by his dish. It's still a tartare encapsulated in vegetable with the, with the green juice. So, yeah, I'm happy with what I've done. Andrew, please, come on in. Good afternoon, Chef. Hey. Andrew has made a salmon tartare with blanched kohlrabi, an avocado emulsion, 
crispy salmon skin, and a pine juice split dressing. Very impressed, very elegant. It's a beautiful plate of food. That is a dish, and it works really, really well. It's a really summery tartar dish. The avocado, that balances, grounds it. Really liked how it was sourced in the middle. The one minor criticism I'd say, probably have the salmon a little bit bigger. But as a dish, it's probably the most refined of what I've been served today. And with the time frame you've done it, I think that's really, really impressive. This is up there with some of the best feedback I've ever got. For him to say that he thought it was a, a polished and refined dish, brilliant compliment. I feel over the moon with that. When three new chefs walk through the door, you've got no idea what they're capable of. But, you know, I had a really good first impression with, with each of them. Tomorrow, in service, they can have their work cut out. I'm really looking forward to It's day two at Hyde. Today, the semi-finalists will each be responsible for cooking a course of the lunchtime tasting menu. Exosé will kick off the service with a dish of steamed turbot with spinach, pickled garlic, celery, and a lemon verbena sauce. It's a dish that I'm really proud of. It's really important that when you cook it, that you have a lightness of touch to the dish. So we're going to start off by cooking the turbot. Beautiful fish, just want it lightly steamed to really keep that freshness of flavor. Simplicity can be the hardest thing to achieve. There's only a few elements to get right, but they must be right, otherwise there's nowhere for it to hide. And then sharp knife. So the turbot, when we carve it, almost pearlescent, the bit that just can't afford to get wrong, essentially. So you can see a kind of mother of pearl. It's just cooked, but delicious. The turbot on top, careful when you pick it up. The next step is the celery, following the shape of the bowl. And then finally, the sauce is going to be generous with it. Feeling confident about reproducing this? Yeah, I'm feeling confident. I'm excited and don't want to let you down. Appreciate it. I'm sure you won't. Chef makes it look easy, but I'm guessing it won't be that easy in service. Uh, there's a lot of attention to detail and I want to do him proud. Andrew will be in charge of the main course. Ollie's Cornish lobster, baked in a fig leaf over charcoal and a minestrone of the claw. Andrew, you've got potentially one of the biggest challenges of today. It's a dish that I love. There's quite a lot of elements, so you're going to need to be reorganised and serviced with regards to producing the same plate of food consistently. Before service, Andrew must set his lobster tails perfectly straight and wrap them in a fig leaf. I've always loved the flavour of fig leaves from when you walk past a fig tree in the summer and the smell comes off from the leaves. With the sweetness of the lobster, it, it's a beautiful combination. So we're going to cook it in the barbecue on the first shelf just above the coals. So quite aggressive, quite hot, for about four minutes. While the tail cooks, Andrew must bring together the side dish of lobster claw minestrone. A little bit of copper. Italian cured pork neck, it's a very small amount. And then finally, the lobster claw. And we're just going to gently heat this together. It's really important that the claw doesn't overcook, the vegetables stay crisp and al dente. Going to check the lobster. All right, so that's 49, so that's perfect. We're good to plate up. The minestrone. Straight in the dish. 
and just a little bit of the froth on top. So that's the end dish. I, that looks absolutely stunning. Should we, uh, should we give it a try? Oh, yes, please. Lost for words. <laughs> that is, that's game changing. That's so good. That's an immense amount of flavor in there. It's just beautiful. Feeling confident about recreating it for a busy lunch service? Yeah, there's, there's lots of elements in this, so I've got to be really organized, but I just, I've, I desperately want to do that justice now after Excellent. tasting it. It's just, in, just incredible. Good. Stu will be working in the pastry section, taking charge of Ollie's signature dessert that uses coconut five different ways. It is a tricky one to plate. There's no sort of two ways about it. The base of the dish is coconut macaroon, filled with a lime caramel, topped with a coconut mousse. It's a dessert that I'm really proud to be serving here at Hyde. It's one that I think encapsulates our minimalist approach. The trickiest part of the dish, coconut ice cream. We scoop it to a concentric circle, as it looks almost like a head of a flower, because we achieve that effect. I actually feel sorry for the guy now, just thinking about it. That's really cool. I've never seen anything like that before. And then we need to build it very quickly. So you want the shards organic, but quite open. And then finishing off with the sorrel flowers. Easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It looks amazing. The ice cream, the technique I've never seen before, I think it, it adds so much to the dish. It's definitely going to be a difficult one to get right. I feel quite bad after how good it looks to destroy <laughs> it. Mm. It hits coconut in every single way, in all the textures, the, the flavour. It's really, really good. It's midday, and morning prep is almost over. Guests from all over the country travel to sample Ollie's unique tasting menu. And today, the three semi-finalists will be on the front line delivering to his standards. The level of Hyde and the level of Michelin, it's a pressure that's always there. They're going to need to lift their game to that level while they're in the kitchen, so it's that simple. Feeling a bit nervous because this is something that's really out of my depth of knowledge. To think that it's so highly regarded that if we make any mistakes, it's going to affect their reputation, and, you know, we can't do that. This is a big responsibility, cooking someone else's food at a Michelin style level. Can't let him down, there's no room for mistakes. First table's in, take ownership of the dish, feel proud to be serving that dish. I'm here to help, but I'm not here to do your job for you. Okay? So, first check two lunch menu, two turbo, two lobster, two coconut. While his turbot steams, Exose has eight minutes to prepare his sauce and cook his spinach, celery, and pickled garlic garnishes. Very really excited, yeah. So hopefully the first one impress him and then just keep keeping that standard. I've just got one fish in as a backup as well, just in case I carve it wrong or it drops. We don't want to keep the customers waiting. OK, use the, uh, use the spare piece for now. Yep. And then get one more spare piece in. So one of the fish had just snapped uh, when I was pulling it out. I just need to be more gentle with it. A bit heavy-handed at the moment. With his first turbot rejected, there's no room for error. And Exose's backup fillet must be perfectly cooked. All done. Perfect. Yep, so on the tray. OK, so bring it to the pass along with the celery. Very 
very nice. Thanks, Jeff. OK, guys, uh, two turbo, table 14, please. Thanks, Jose. So, yeah, just be careful with the fish for next time. Just uh, soft hands, OK? Yes, sir. A lovely cookie on it. First orders are also in for Andrew's barbecue fig leaf lobster. The tail needs to be cooked to precisely 49 degrees. Just sticking it back in again for a minute because it's not quite up to temperature yet. He also needs to make his lobster claw minestrone a la minute to each individual order. Yeah, lobster's looking good. A little bit of lobster oil and then the sauce on top and we're good to go. They're very nice. Thank you, Chef. Good, really good first attempt. Good to go there, table 14, two lobster, thank you. First dish went out fine, so I'm just going to keep my momentum, try and get them all out perfect. Andrew, four lobster or eight, table eight. Yes, Chef. Two more lobster away, table one. So four, then two, then two. Oui. Orders are stacking up for Andrew. He can't afford to lose focus. Despite having rarely worked in a restaurant service before, Andrew is coping well. But as orders pile up, he forgets the central element to his menestrone. Jeff, I've got to put the lobster in here. It'll just be one more minute. OK, Andrew, a lot to remember, but uh, the lobster <laughs> needs to go in there, OK? Yes, Chef. I forgot to put the lobster in that one. Luckily, it cooks really quick, so I managed to rectify the problem. Service, please, here. Table four, four lobster away. Oh, my God. Wow. That is divine. Yeah. Okay, uh, Stu got in front of two coconut, table 22. Yes, yeah, Chef. First plates. Hopefully, it goes well. With first orders in for his coconut dessert. No pressure. Stu must now quickly master the intricate flower curl ice cream technique. Uh, you're a bit too open, a bit yeah. too early. So you are like that. You need to be. Yeah, so keep it shallow and just pick the speed up a little bit, a little bit. The ice cream is a challenge. It's just I'm eating the standards of the chefs is quite high, so it has to be perfect. Very happy with that one. Smashed it. Really good, really good. All down to the training. Cheers, chef. It's a relief to get the uh, technique right for the ice cream. It's just the rest yeah. of it now. Lovely. Really nice, Suke. OK, Jeff. table 14, please. Two coconut. Thank you. Feels good for the, the chef to like the desserts. No, it's just getting that right every time. Better. <laughs> it's going better than expected so far. I knew the dishes would be complicated. Yeah, wanted something testing, but very proud of how they're doing. All the diners have now arrived, and lunch service is at its busiest. OK, so let's uh, keep the pace going now in the heart of lunch service. Two more turbo away, table four. Me. So going three turbo, followed by two, followed by four. Me. Next to say, how long for the four turbo, two and two? Four turbo is another two minutes, chef. Yeah. And you've got two more in the oven to I follow. i got two more. Lovely. Checks are building up now, just gotta make sure I've got the timings right for each one, so to make sure the fish are cooked. Chef. That a little raw. Yeah, have we got one more piece? Just do it back up one. Okay, let's go back in the oven, about yep. two minutes. And get one more piece in as well. Yes, chef. You did exactly the right thing there. It's a little bit under. We cook a new one. You identified the problem. 
That honesty goes a long way, so I appreciate that. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yeah, just a few little hiccups, but um, I'll bring it back. And check the fish, Chef. Yeah, so much better. OK, let's go. On the lobster main, Andrew has his biggest order of the day. OK, check on penultimate one. Uh, six covers, six lobster, table five there. After forgetting to add his lobster claw to the minestrone, the pressure is now on to deliver six perfect plates. Just thinking ahead, we've got to really be on the ball. Best plates of food we've served all lunchtime. Plates full of life, really elegant. Thank you, Very Chef. Polished. OK, front of house, please. Yourself, table three. <laughs> I'm still enjoying it, uh, feeling the pressure now. Yeah, just got to keep doing good dishes. Yeah, look good. What a beautiful thing. It's always hard plating big tables, getting it all hot, getting it all to a level that we're happy with. But uh, really good effort here. Yeah, sure. Okay, service please, table 22. Definitely challenging, yeah. Definitely pushing myself here. Yeah. Service is now into its third hour, and Stu is finding his feet, bringing together all the elements of the coconut dessert. He's doing well so far. But the service goes on, freezer temperatures can become a little bit warmer because you're opening and closing them all service. So but the ice cream can be a little bit softer, so I need to just keep an eye on that one. One got away, bit of a slippery job. The ice cream's getting a little bit tricky now, so it has to be the perfect temperature. Let's get the meringues on before it melts. Lovely ice cream there. Really elegant place of food. Thanks, Chef. OK, table one, please. So it's just a case of keeping focused, just making it as nice as it has been all the way through. OK, check on. Last table for lunch service, guys. Four covers there, lunch. Four turbo, four lobster, four coconut, table 11. Oui. Oui. Make it your best one yet? Yes, yeah, Chef. I think I've done uh, well. It was a little bit of a rocky start, but I brought it back to, towards the end. My last table. <laughs> I wish there was more tables. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Happy with the dish? I'm happy with the dish, Chef. You should be. OK. It's a call service. Let them know it's table 11. Service. Table, chef. E table 11, please. Table 11. Well done. Breathe. <laughs> service is over. So, and that's your first time in the kitchen here, but uh, I think you really earned your place among the brigade, so well done today. Just thank you for having me in this kitchen and thank you for teaching me. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I'm coming to the end now, this is my last four plates. It's been brilliant, I really enjoyed this. A little wipe on that one there, and then, uh... Lovely, really nice, Andrew. Service, table 11. Good, Chef. A bit of a fish out of water in, like, a, a service environment, so I was kind of nervous how I was going to get on. But I think I managed to keep up with everyone. I'm, I'm really happy. With mains and starters now completed, all eyes are on Stu to complete service on a high. Looking sharp, just as good as the first one. Service, please. Table 11, thank you. Well done. Cheers, well done. Chef. Made thank it. You, Cheers. Nice to have you. Technically, that's a really tough one to build with the ice cream. I thought you picked it up very, very quickly, so well done once again. Thank you very much. That was a tough service. Obviously, walking into a Michelin star kitchen, you've got to up your game. It was a massive relief that I managed to get that technique going, because, to be honest, I thought that was going to take me down straight away.
really well done. That was a cracking service. You should be really proud of what you serve. I am. What you've done today in the last couple of days, I've been really impressed by. Stu, very talented chef. That coconut dish is very hard to do, and he made it look pretty simple. He's definitely got a bright future. To do two days working for Ollie has been amazing. He's such a, a calm and kind of kind chef. And it gives me that confidence to feel like I can push myself a little bit further. With Andrew, the fact that he hasn't done many restaurant services took me by surprise, because I think he's just very reassured. I think, I think he's quite unflappable and did a great job. I've done 12 years in the Navy. I'm going to be leaving soon. And that's kind of given me a little taste of what I could be doing outside. It set me on a path of a completely different life, and it's very exciting. Exoze really performs well for a young lad, full of enthusiasm, full of that desire to learn. That's all he can hope for. I'm learning so much. I'm finding out more about myself. My confidence keeps getting better. Looking forward, what I need to prove to the judges is that I am capable of uh, being in the finals and presenting some knockout dishes. Right, chefs, there is a place in finals week up for grabs. We want from you two incredible dishes in one hour and 30 minutes. At the end of this, one of you will be leaving the competition. Off you go. Just a lot of pressure. There's a lot riding on today. I'm doing a brand new dish, techniques I've never done before. It's, it's very risky. So I'm feeling quite nervous today. Andrew, I'm sure it's been a very long time since you've been in a kitchen like Ollie's. How was it? Uh, it was amazing. It was, it was a real, had a real effect on me, actually. So much so that I've even changed this dish today. Wow. I'm really intrigued. What are the dishes, then? The main course is going to be pigeon roasted on the crown, confiting the heart and the leg. I'm serving them with salt baked beetroots, some truffle, and there's going to be a pigeon sauce on there as well. And for pud? There's going to be a layer of raspberry compote, a layer of lemon balm posset, and the top is going to be dressed with fresh raspberries, fresh lemon balm, and some lavender shortbread. Good luck, Andrew. Thank you very much. Pigeon has to be cooked just right, has to be nice and pink and beautifully caramelised and coloured on the outside. Salt baked beets and gerols, wonderful garnish for a pigeon dish. We want to taste some of the salt crust running through the beetroots and make sure the beetroots are cooked well. Sauce needs to have clarity and a good depth of flavour to bring all these ingredients together. I love a great lemon posset. This is a very hot kitchen today. You can't afford for the posset to be melting. There's no gelatine in it. There's no other setting agent in it. It's all about the lemon juice reacting with the double cream. Chefs, you've had half an hour, 30 minutes gone. What I want today, and it's something that I've wanted throughout the whole competition, for all of them to say, this is perfect, I wouldn't change a thing. I've just got to do it, I've got to work my magic today. Tell us about your two dishes. So I've got a berico pork with glazed carrots, carrot puree, char siu sauce. Char siu is a smoky kind of barbecue sauce and pak choy. And your dessert? Vanilla and miso cheesecake, sable biscuits, Strawberries dressed in a strawberry vinegar and fructose, and some strawberry sorbet. It's going to be a hell of a good cheesecake, though, doesn't it? I mean, this is for a place in our final. Yeah. Just cook the food that I like to eat, and strawberry cheesecake is my all-time favourite dessert, so I thought, why not now? 
I want to taste the, the spices in this barbecue sauce. Cooking of the cheek, you don't want to dry this out because it will become very tough. It should just fall apart. Carrot puree, glazed carrots, I think that will work really, really well. It sounds delicious. Stew's cheesecake may sound simple, but it will be full of complexity. We've got a strawberry gel, we've got a strawberry sorbet, we've got miso in the dessert as well. I'm really curious how Stu is going to serve this cheesecake to really elevate it. I don't want to scare you, but you've got 30 minutes left. I wanted to do a spectacular two-course meal because this is for spot in the finals, but I think I've put too many things on. I'm really worried about getting it all done in time. Ixose is making a venison main course with ash around the outside of the venison. We've got two different types of potatoes. We've got blanched onions and we've got an onion puree and a lovely red wine sauce to go with it. A sauce that's got rich flavour, clarity and complements the venison. Exorcé's dessert is a chocolate mousse. It's got layers of passion fruit running through it. This has got to be fully set because he then wants to coat it in a chocolate coating. We have a cocoa nib twill, candied nuts and a passion fruit sauce. There is a lot going on with this dessert. I can understand why he's looking very stressed now. He hasn't stopped running since we got here. You've got a lot going on here, Exoze. What is going on? I tried not to be too safe because it's the semi-finals, but I think I went too overboard. What is it about your menu that's stressing you out? So the dessert, if the mousse isn't set in time, then um, I can't have the original idea that I wanted. You've got to pull this together. You know, dig deep. You've got the experience to save your dessert if you're worried about it. And make sure everything else is spot on. Not set. The mousse that I set in the mould, it's not set yet. It's still soft in there, so I've still got some left over. I'm just going to pipe it on the plate. He is now in a position where he's going to need to think on his feet, and it could be make or break for him. Three minutes, chefs. Three minutes. That's it, stop! Time's up. I need a hug. Right, <laughs> oh, yeah, really tough. Oh. For a place in finals week, Stu's main course is a berico pork and braised pork cheek on carrot puree, glazed and pickled carrots, and pak choy, finished with a char suey sauce. At first look, wow. You've got the quality cookery in the pork cheek, but you put a little piece of it on the plate and it works a treat because it doesn't overtake the main pork of the dish, the shoulder that you've beautifully cooked. The sauce is a delight. There's a sweet saltiness with it as well. It's got big, bold, massive flavours. Absolutely delicious. That there is your best dish so far in this competition. The five spice in that sauce is beautiful. It's, it's not overpowering and there's a slight sweetness, which goes very well with the sweetness of the carrot. You've got some pickling on there, which cuts through it. I think you nailed it. Absolutely to perfection. That is a really clever take on a mixture of Spanish product and Chinese flavouring. That is a cracker. Stew's dessert is his take on a strawberry cheesecake, a vanilla and miso cream cheese, and sable biscuits. 
with strawberries in fructose and strawberry gel. A lemon verbena garnish served with a strawberry sorbet. <laughs> All right. Mm. 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 The miso and the vanilla is fantastic because that's giving the tartness of a cream cheese that you would get in a cheesecake. You've taken the natural sweetness of a strawberry and enhanced it. Also through the sorbet, it really packs a strawberry fruity punch. This is your second cracker of a dish. What's Ollie done to you, chef? <laughs> the strawberry sorbet on the side, which is lovely and cool and refreshing. But then when you have the cream cheese mix, you have the savoury notes, a bit of saltiness from the miso edition. Yeah, I'm glad that you put so much of the, the biscuit base on there because it needs it to cut through what you have here. An absolute delight. I love the classic cheesecake, a slice of it. Sometimes you don't want to play around with those but you've just absolutely revolutionised a cheesecake in a modern way with the addition of miso. That little hint of saltiness that sits through the dish is absolutely brilliant. Really, really, really good. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. To get all three judges happy with both of my dishes. Yeah, buzzing, absolutely buzzing. For his main, Exose has served venison smoked and rolled in hay ash with white onion puree, blanched onions, smoked pomme puree, confit potatoes, and crispy lotus root, finished with a venison jus. Venison's cooked perfectly, and around the outside it's got that smoked hay. It almost gives it like a, a chalkiness to it. There's a smokiness going through that buttery potato puree. Your sauce is rich with a hint of sweetness. I do, however, think with all those beautiful flavours, that dish deserves to look a little bit better. It is a lovely flavoured sauce. It's got a lovely body to it. That tastes great, but... I'm not tasting the onion puree. I'm tasting the potato puree. It's a good dish, but I do think there is room for improvement on the dish. Venison, I've had so many times, but it's what you've done with it, with this ash, which is really interesting, and the smokiness that runs through it. I quite like that. And I also like the fact you've kept the sauce very neutral, because I think anything more would just really overpower this dish. I think being under pressure is why your dish is, is sort of rushed in the way you presented it. Exose's dessert is chocolate and hazelnut mousse, passion fruit gel, and cocoa nib twill on sable breton biscuit with candied hazelnuts served with a passion fruit sauce. Exosé, you've plated this differently to, to how you originally had planned. That aside, I think presentation still needs a bit more refining. Flavours are great. You have got a buttery biscuit there. You have got mild cocoa in the chocolate and you've got very sharp, sweet passion fruit but it isn't the finished dish, and you can see it's not a finished exosé dish. The passion fruit sauce is delicious. I love how sharp it is, and it works very well with the chocolate, which is more like a ganache. The coconut twill brings a bit of crunch. In part, it's caught a bit, so it brings a bit of bitterness to it. I like the flavours. I'm a bit disappointed because I know how great you are in pastry. You have done some very special desserts so far. And unfortunately, this does not come close to any of your other creations. But the little bits and pieces that you've got on it do work together. The Breton is very well made. The chocolate mousse is smooth, taste of chocolate. Not the dessert you wanted to serve, so we know that. 
<laughs> really tough, that was really tough. I'm gutted about the dessert. The one I had in my mind and the one I practised was just... It just looked beautiful and uh, it's a shame I didn't get to show that. Finally, it's Andrew, whose main dish is squab pigeon breast with a hazelnut and truffle crumb, confit pigeon leg and heart, salt-baked beetroot and sorted gerolles, finished with a pigeon sauce. The beetroot's beautifully cooked. I like the hazelnuts on here. The pigeon leg is just flaking away. It's been confied nicely. And I like the, the breast with the crumb on top. For me, the cooking is a little bit over. The heart is cooked well and it's meaty. It's got real flavour. I love earthy sweet beetroots with quite a bit of salt on there as well. Your sauce is great. It's fruity. It's a lighter dish from you. Personally, I welcome that. I think you have been inspired by your time with Ollie, which is always good to see a chef having courage to come into the kitchen and to take on the challenge of doing something a little bit different, a twist on your own food. The lovely flavours here, it's a very, very good plate of food, but when we're cooking pigeon, we need to take it a little bit on the lighter side. This is overcooked, just a touch. A little bit too strong there. Andrew's dessert is a lemon balm posset on a lavender raspberry compote, finished with lavender shortbread, fresh raspberries, and lemon balm. The lavender shortbread I've really enjoyed. Sweet with a real snap. I think your posset most certainly should be thicker. I have a very sweet tooth. That is very sharp for me, and I prefer my desserts much sweeter. My good friend Monica loves a sharp finish. You may get a different response from her. The flavours of it, Greg and I are very different. He's got the sweet tooth. I love sharp, you know, so I really am enjoying the, the sharpness of the lemon and the raspberries. You know, I could finish this whole thing but hasn't quite set to the right consistency. Flavours for me, fantastic. The texture of the dish isn't quite as it should be. It should be set by itself in the dish. Almost a clotted cream-like texture, but just a little bit lighter. It does taste good, though. I got some good feedback. There was a couple of negative points, and the negative points I totally agreed with, so... I can only hope that I've done enough. Oh. I'm still going to be praying. <laughs> Fabulous dishes in here today. Those three chefs have grown in stature and some of those dishes were absolutely first class. Stu today was the outstanding chef. I thought his two courses were faultless. I loved his Iberico pork dish with the flavours of a Chinese five spice sauce running through it. The pork cheek was sensational. The pork shoulder cooked to perfection. The sauce just beautifully harmonising all of the dish together. And of course, who doesn't like a cheesecake, especially when it's done at a level like he did it today? The flavours of the miso and the strawberries Brilliant. I thought Stu did a fantastic job. Stu goes through to finals week, right? Absolutely. OK. Andrew and Exoze, one of them leaves the competition. Exoze's put so much pressure on himself, he was stressed. But in saying that, the venison dish, beautifully cooked. I love the smokiness of this dish. And it carried all the way through every bite that you had. And I just thought that was very clever. The dessert, it just didn't have exosé sexy smartness on it. However, good flavours. Now, I just thought Andrew's pigeon dish was a delight. 
It was lighter than the type of cooking that he'd done before, and I welcomed it. I thought it was beautiful. I really liked the crumb on top of the pigeon breast, but I found the pigeon slightly overcooked. Andrew's dessert looked great. I love sharp desserts. It was just a shame that the texture wasn't right. The posset wasn't set. It, was, it should have been a thick, velvety cream, and it was a shame. Getting through would be just a crazy experience. I'm still hoping, but I can't tell at this point. I don't know. I didn't want to go down without a fight today. I really wanted to get into that final. Just kept pushing and pushing. I fought to the end. You're going to look back on this and you won't believe how you've changed as chefs and how you've grown. I've been very proud to meet all three of you and I wish you the best going forward. We only have two places in finals week. The chef leaving the competition is Andrew. Thank you so much. Very, very well done. Thank you Come so much, on. Jeff. Thank you. You should be proud. You've got a great career in front of you and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Jeff. It means a lot. I mean that. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done. I feel really good, actually. It's been great. It's just grown so much, learned so much. Now that I'm leaving the Navy, I can leave it with a real sense of direction behind me. I'm really excited to see what I'm going to do in the future. Finals week. It's going to get very, very exciting. Mom, I'm in the finals. <laughs> I'm in the finals. Oh, I can't believe it. This is by far the biggest achievement in my life. Oh, well done, mate. Well done. I'm in the final four. That doesn't make sense in my head. I never believed up until about 30 seconds ago that it was possible, to be honest. That's my only chance to mess up. No, no more messing up. No. That's a second chance. Next time, it's the professional Master Chef Finals. Honestly, it was a perfection. Really good. To create something new is maybe the best sensation in life. That is so fresh. I'm in love with this dish. One chef will be crowned professional MasterChef champion 2019. I think that is delightful. I can't fault that dish at all.